Welcome to the worship of First Christian Church in Black Mountain, North Carolina. We're so glad that you've joined us in worship today. This day, the third Sunday of Advent, is a day that the Lord has made. So let us rejoice and be glad in it. Though we are not in the sanctuary together, through technology, the sanctuary comes into our homes. Wherever you are, let us worship together. This week, we read another passage from the prophet Isaiah and turn to Luke's story about Mary, the young woman who will give birth to a son and call him Jesus. She also sings a song about what God is accomplishing through this child. The message in both Luke and Isaiah that the downcast, lowly, and oppressed would rise up is a welcome and inspirational account. Like the exiled people of Isaiah's time and like the early Christians, we also sometimes wonder where God is in our suffering. We long to hear the promise that a reason for joyful praise is the good news on the way. The loneliness of fear. The loneliness of fear. The invisibility of the next step. The invisibility of the next step. The yearning for presence. The yearning for presence. Holy One, we thank you for the glimpses we catch of your gift of the depths of joy. Even in the midst of fear, of challenge, of struggle, even when we are not sure of your presence, Ignite the flame of joy within us, that, that we, we might, might glow, glow with its with brilliance, brilliance from, from the inside, inside out. out. Help us face the silence of unknowing and embrace it as the pregnant pause before joyful new beginnings. Amen.
It will be said, survey, survey, build a road, remove barriers from my people's road. The one who is high and lifted up, who lives forever, whose name is holy, says, I live on high in holiness and also with the crushed and the lowly, reviving the spirit of the lowly, reviving the heart of those who have been crushed. I won't always accuse, nor will I be enraged forever. It is my own doing that their spirit is exhausted. I gave them breath. I was enraged about their illegal prophets. I struck them with enrage I withdrew from them. Yet they went on wandering wherever they wanted. I have seen their ways, but I will heal them. I will guide them and reward them with comfort. And for those who mourn, I will create reason for praise, utter prosperity to those far and near, and I will heal them, says the Lord. I invite you to join your hearts in prayer. Loving God, we are taking a break this morning from a world of demands and worries as we worship we seek the inner joy that only your presence can bring to our lives. Open our hearts and our spirits to your presence. Help us celebrate this Advent and Christmas season wholeheartedly and open-handedly. We pray today for all those in our world who can't see beyond the darkness of their lives, for those in our community who are grieving, for those facing health issues, for families who seem to be coming apart, we offer our prayers. For those in our world facing violence, disease, and poverty, we offer our prayers to you, O oh God. We lift up today the work and ministry of the Christian Church in North Carolina. Bless each of our congregations as we seek to witness to your grace guide our regional minister and the regional staff who work on our behalf. And we pray for ourselves as we continue our Advent journey, 
Slow us down, Lord. Help us to feel the joy of your love from the inside out and in every direction. Remind us that your gift of joy is freely given to us so that we may be a blessing to someone else. Touch our hearts and spirits so that your joy may spring from our lips and our lives. For we ask it in Jesus' name as we pray as he taught, saying, Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. What a privilege it is to be a part of the work of God's kingdom here in our community and throughout our region in addition to giving to the ministry of First Christian Church, we are today receiving the Christmas offering, which supports our shared ministry in the Christian Church in North Carolina. Through our financial offerings, we are partners with God's people throughout the world, bringing the hope, peace, and joy to our communities. Let us give to God. Let us pray. Loving God, we give these gifts in response to the goodness and compassion you have given to us. Renew in us your joy that we might continue to live grateful for the abundance of our lives. Amen. Our documentary this week, Following the Ninth, shows how Beethoven's Ninth Symphony has been a powerful witness to the human spirit overcoming adversity all around the world. In the Ode to Joy, Beethoven put to music a poem that praises and wishes for freedom and peace between all peoples. Henry Van Dyke also had progressive ideals in mind when he wrote the words to our next song with the express intent that they be sung to the tune of Beethoven's Ode to Joy. Many others have written words to this inspirational tune, including British punk rocker Billy Bragg. His three stanzas have become popular in England, even being performed for the Queen. We've incorporated one of his stanzas in our singing of Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee this morning. Oh, 
Many people have already applied themselves to the task of compiling an account of the events that have been fulfilled among us. They used what the original eyewitnesses and servants of the Word handed down to us. Now, after having investigated everything carefully from the beginning, I have also decided to write a carefully ordered account for you, Most Honorable Theophilus. I want you to have confidence in the soundness of the instruction you have received. When Elizabeth was six months pregnant, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a city in Galilee, to a virgin who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David's house. The virgin's name was Mary. When the angel came to her, he said, Rejoice, favored one, the Lord is with you. She was confused by these words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said, Don't be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Look, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David his father. He will rule over Jacob's house forever, and there will be no end to his kingdom. Then Mary said to the angel, how will this happen since I haven't had sexual relations with a man? The angel replied, The Holy Spirit will come over you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the one who has to be born will be holy. He will be called God's Son. Look, even in her old age, your relative Elizabeth has conceived a son. This woman who was labeled unable to conceive is now six months pregnant. Nothing is impossible for God. Then Mary said, I am the Lord's servant. Let it be with me just as you have said. Then the angel left her. Mary got up and hurried to a city in the Judean highlands. She entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. With a loud voice, she blurted out, God has blessed you above all women, and he has blessed the, carry, the child you carry. Why do I have this honor, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. Happy is she who believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises he made to her. Mary said, With all my heart I will glorify the Lord. In the depths of who I am, I rejoice in God my Savior. He has looked with favor on the low status of his servant. Look, from now on, everyone will consider me highly favored because the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. He shows mercy to everyone from one generation to the next, who honors him as God. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered those with arrogant thoughts and proud inclinations. He has pulled the powerful down from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty-handed. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, remembering his mercy just as he promised to our ancestors, to Abraham and to Abraham's descendants forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to her home.
Oh joy, oh joy. Do you hear the difference? The same expression with different intonations can have totally different meanings. Oh joy, oh joy. On this third Sunday of Advent, when we light the joy candle, are you feeling, oh joy, or oh joy? At best, I think we can say that the year 2020 is an oh joy kind of year, if not some other colorful descriptive words, which we won't say here. The world feels upside down and our Advent worship doesn't feel right. Oh joy. One Sunday during Advent 30 some years ago, Amy and I were sitting in a small Baptist church in Northern Haiti. The preacher began his sermon with these words. I've heard it said that Haiti can't celebrate Christmas any longer. Christmas is about joy, hope, and peace. And Haiti, in the current situation of widespread poverty and political turmoil, has none of these things. So how can we Haitians celebrate Christmas? He went on to tell how Israel was in a similar situation at the time of Jesus' birth. With an occupying force in their country, people were asking, where is God? Why does God no longer love God's people? It was into this setting, he said, that Emmanuel, God with us, was born. Those questions asked by the Haitian pastor seem just as relevant today. How does what we celebrate at Christmas impact suffering people in Haiti, or people caught in the civil war in Ethiopia, or the families of the almost 3,000 Americans who died yesterday of COVID-19, or those who have lost their jobs and face foreclosure on their homes? or those grieving the recent death of a loved one, or those in any number of human situations that we could name. Does the message of Emmanuel, God with us, really matter to these? Where's the joy? Where is the joy? That could have been the question that Zechariah and Elizabeth asked. They lived in an occupied country where the rich and powerful took advantage of those less fortunate. They lived in a time when many of the religious leaders chose to side with the government and supported policies that benefited the haves in society at the expense of everyone else. And they didn't have a lot of joy in their personal lives either. They had not been blessed with any children until a visit from an angel informed them that Elizabeth would give birth to a son. Where's the joy? That could have been Mary's question. A young peasant girl, Mary was no stranger to a marginalized life. She wasn't from a wealthy family. She didn't hold any position of power. She probably knew what it was like to be overlooked underrepresented and silenced by the culture around her. A poor Jewish girl in a community under the rule of the Roman Empire. And then Mary gets her own angelic visitor who informs her that God has found favor in her and is honoring her by having her conceive and give birth to a son whom she is to name Jesus. Oh joy, or oh joy. Mary decides to visit her relative Elizabeth, whom she somehow knows will be a kindred spirit. I imagine the two of them together, excited, nervous, and perhaps still living with a hint of disbelief. Elizabeth begins and breaks out with spirit-inspired words. She declares Mary blessed. She declares the child Mary is carrying blessed. And she recognizes Mary's faith in God's promises as a blessing too. 
It is right after this spiritual declaration and affirmation from her cousin Elizabeth, who is living with her own miracle as a pregnant woman a little past her childbearing years, it is right after this that Mary breaks out into her song. This beautiful, heartfelt, and truthful song speaks about the plight of the lowly and the power of God's promises. Her song echoes the words of prophets and speaks of God's love, faithfulness, and justice. Mary's song is an unprecedented song for an unprecedented time. As Christians in the face of a pandemic that is not letting up anytime soon, we know what it's like to live in unprecedented times. We are surrounded by pain and fear. We see oppression. We see the powerful show little regard for the lowly and the marginalized. We see the gaps between the haves and the have-nots. Gaps in access to healthcare, in access to resources for distance education, gaps in how normal people are treated differently by government institutions. We see the pain of racial violence and discrimination. All of this pain around us is reason enough to wonder, where is the joy? And yet, it is in this season of Advent that we remember Christ is coming and Christ has the power to change your tune. Christ is coming and Christ has the power to turn ordinary folks into singers of songs of hope and justice, songs that speak of a promise and a future, songs that point to God's mercy, no matter who's in power and no matter who's in control. We need Mary's song this year more than ever. We need her faith, inspiration, and joy in this season. We've never had an Advent season like this one. We've never waited like this before. We've never had to slow down like this. We've never had to stop and listen to the world around us in this particular way. We've never had to sit in the silence and listen for God like this. What kind of songs will we sing while we wait? We can name all that is wrong. We can name all that is painful and all that needs changing. While it is important to lament the pain in our world, it's also important to celebrate the dawning of a new day and to sing songs of hope and joy. In the film, Following the Ninth, which Amy mentioned, we learn how the music Ode to Joy, part of Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, has inspired people to sing for justice and freedom, to sing for joy in the moments of human tragedy I had never heard how this piece of music has become an anthem of liberation and hope that has inspired many around the world. It is an inspiring story. From Tiananmen Square in 1989, when students played the Ninth Symphony over loudspeakers as the army came in to crush their struggle for freedom, <clears throat> as the Berlin Wall came down in 1989, it collapsed to the sound of Leonard Bernstein connect, conducting Beethoven's Ninth as an ode to freedom. And in Japan, where the Ninth is performed hundreds of times each December, this music became a source of resilience and comfort for the nation in the aftermath of the earthquake and tsunami in 2011. Like Mary's song, and like Beethoven's Ode to Joy, our songs of hope, love, joy, and peace tell a story that says that God will right the wrongs. God restores the brokenness, and even in the face of fear and death, God offers new life in unexpected ways. 
It is in the midst of these unprecedented times and this unprecedented advent that we have a chance to sing new songs, songs that break the bonds of injustice, songs that set the captive free. We have the opportunity to sing songs that speak of love in the face of hatred, and we can sing songs that instill joy in the midst of challenging times. Maybe we can find Mary's song of hope and joy playing in our own lives. Oh joy, or oh joy. Maybe it's both. I close with a poem from my favorite poet, poet for this time of year. Anne Weems and her book, Kneeling in Bethlehem. The poem is entitled, Not Celebrate, by Anne Weems. Not celebrate? Your burden is too great to bear? Your loneliness is intensified during this Christmas season? Your tears seem to have no end? Not celebrate? You should lead the celebration. You should run through the streets to ring the bells and sing the loudest. You should fling the tinsel on the tree as you dance and sing. For it is you above all others who know the joy of Advent. It is unto you that a savior is born this day. One who comes to lift your burden from your shoulders one who comes to wipe the tears from your eyes. You are not alone, for he is born this day to you. Thanks be to God for the joy that can still be ours. Amen. So often in this Christmas season, we gather around tables loaded with abundant food. Perhaps that makes it even more of a gift to come each week to this table, where we rejoice not in the amount of food, but in the meaning of these elements, simple bread and juice. And yet in these gifts, we receive the full power of God's love made known to us in the baby born in Bethlehem. Let us share in this meal in joy.
When Jesus was at supper with his disciples, he took a loaf of bread and after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to them saying, this bread represents my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus took a cup and after giving thanks, he poured it and gave it to them saying, this cup represents the new covenant, which is poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. We come to you this morning, Lord, seeking joy. The joy we knew before this pandemic we have lost most of our joy, but have found joy in small things, watching a bird build a nest, or watching a raindrop roll down a window pane. But Lord, we long for the joy that is overwhelming and fills our hearts with music. The joy we feel when we eat this bread and drink this wine of remembrance. We pray that you will bring us this great joy today and every day that we partake of the emblems. In Jesus' name, amen. As often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we remember the Lord's life, death, and resurrection and proclaim his ongoing presence with us.
We wait for justice. We do not wait to work for change. We wait for restored health, but we do not wait to work for healing. We wait for wholeness, but we do not wait to work at binding brokenness. We wait for peace, but we do not wait to work at eliminating hatred. And so, my friends, like the bells ringing out the news that God is ever present with us, fill the night left by sadness with messages of joy. Go into your lives humming the tunes that keep that joy alive in you. Raise your voices and repeat after me, do not be afraid. Do, do not, not be, be afraid. afraid. Amen. Oh,